guys welcome back um, I just wanted to talk today about the weekly death cross and uh, what I think about it um, so I've got a bit of a mixed feeling here right and I'll be honest with you and I'll tell you exactly why so we know normally whenever a death cross happens on any time frame the market tends to be bearish and we tend to go down um, however the weekly uh, death cross it's the first time we've ever had it so we've never had another data point um, to look back to and say, okay, weekly ones can be bearish or bullish. We don't know. So keeping that in mind, um, I want to be, um, you know, I'm going to be cautious, obviously. Um, however, I am over bullish. I have always been bullish. I've been bullish since November, um, especially since December. I've been very, very bullish. I've also um, said that this is a bull run. We have we have entered the bull market. Now, the market might go up and down. That's a different story. But to me, it looks like we are in a bull market right now. And, you know, everything's, you know, kind of, how would I say this, like messed up in the sense that, okay, we've got this death cross. We don't really know where to go. You know, the charts look like kind of messed up. Um, but right now, looking at the this particular week's candle. So we've had last week bearish. The week before was bearish, which is okay. You know, no worries at all. Um, we would love for the market to go down so we can basically scoop up some more. However, looking at today's candle, like this weekly candle, which is going to close on um, uh, Saturday, Sunday, right? Sunday midnight is going to close. I'm looking at this candle and I'm wondering that can this candle become a bullish engulfing candle? Because if it can become a bullish engulfing candle, all we have to do is go above this uh, 23,400, just call it 23,500, that will make it a bullish engulfing candle. Of course, we need the body to be um, engulfing the previous candle. Then um, I'm gonna say it's time to enter the market because you know, regardless we have a death cross on the weekly, um, a bullish engulfing candle is has more power, has more weight behind it because we've had these over and over again. Whereas in the weekly one, we haven't really had one before to go back to. Because remember, whenever we're looking at charts, in order to make comparisons or look at probabilities, we always have to look left, right? So see what the previous data is suggesting the future data can do, right? Um, in this particular case, we do not have any previous data. So we have to take it with a bit of pinch of salt very little pinch of salt right um and um yeah just continue to be bullish i am bullish uh, as i mentioned earlier on as well um and this is what i'm seeing so i'm seeing this to be a lovely um potential uh, for this to become a bullish engulfing candle if it does um then there's no waiting about of course it's probably one day late because today is the 15th of February and I have mentioned the 14th of February would be the day to enter the market. Of course, I didn't enter. I was holding back because I want to see what this market wants to do. Also, just to let you know, there are other data and these are longer term data that are suggesting that yes, we could potentially be bearish. Now that data is the RSI and the stochastic RSI, right? So we saw the RSI taking a reverse, the stochastic RSI clearly indicating that we are in the overbought territory and the market needs to settle. Now this is something we can go by. So I am, you know, for that reason, I do think there's a potential that we could easily go down. Um, however, because most of the people that I know, um, we've already bought before December or the last month for us was in December, um, it doesn't really make much of a difference what the market does now. Reason being is because if we did dump from here, the potential for the dump could be 10, maybe 15, on the worst case scenario, maybe 20%. Now, if you look at the current price and if you look at what 20% potentially could be, it's around the region of about $18,000. Because of that, it's never going to go back to our um, buy orders or our buy zones, which we had during November and December. So for that reason, we're still in profit. And I think it's going to be a good opportunity to now start to um, enter into altcoins. You know, and this is what I'm looking at. Obviously, when I'm talking about altcoins, I'm talking about everything else other than 
Bitcoin because Bitcoin is not a crypto, okay? So remember this, right? Uh, in my opinion, Bitcoin is Bitcoin, everything else is crypto. So I'm thinking altcoins, but on altcoins, I'm focusing a lot on blockchain coins. Um, and this is kind of leading into a little bit, let me talk about this as well. So you know all the current FUD about the SEC? Well, it's nothing unexpected because we've talked about this months and months ago, um, if not weeks and weeks ago, right? We have spoken about this. Um, that, look, there's too many coins out there and sadly, you know, the ways the, the, the market is right now um, with the ERC20 contract um, creation, it's just made it too easy. Like every time something comes out and there's a hype, you just have this all the time. We had the ICO hype during the 2017, again, that came down, you know, so we know a lot of people lost a lot of money during that time. You know, recently um, people realized that, okay, they can just launch anything and use some cross-chain protocols and call it cross-chain whatever, and kind of, you know, swing the market one way or another with enough good marketing. And there is a lot of people involved in crypto right now where it is p possible to, for companies to launch with absolutely nothing and um, pump the market just by using good marketing skills. And these are uh, things that are happening. And also it's problem, uh, sometimes the culprits, the, the criminals, right, who are doing it are the same people to just rinse and repeat nonstop. Um, and they're doing this, right? So that's what's going on. Um, you know, so you've got to be really, really careful what alts you buy. So for me, the way I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, I don't want to take a gamble. There's almost 22, 23,000 crypto um, out there. Um, I don't want to gamble with all of them because I don't know what they're going to do, if they're legit or not. But the ones that have um, the highest amount of funding right now or the highest amount of money invested in seems to be a reasonable um, bet, right? You know, seems to be a potential good bet even if it's a losing bet it doesn't matter because ultimately they can go up now years ago i would have said stick to your you know top 100 top 50 something like this i would have said something like this right um now my stance has changed a little bit because we've seen a lot of these just fail yes we are going to make money um we're going to pump and then everyone's going to dump so the way i'm looking at it is I want something long term now, right? So any alts I'm going to invest in, I'm going to invest in for the next two years, right? Or at least until the peak of the bull market. And um, you know, I'm I'm claiming this is the bull market. We are have entered a bull run. Um, now it's a matter of how high we go. We could go somewhere in between and then dump all the way down. As long as we get a higher low, I'm okay with that, right? I'm still in a bull market, and bull markets could last for years. Um, they don't necessarily have to be for months, right? We can have a parabola for a couple of months or a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of days. Um, and this is like a couple of days, like the worst and the most volatile scenario. But they could last for a couple of months, um, you know, and bull runs could last for a couple of years. And we've seen other bull runs, how they started and how they start to form the structure and continue for, you know, on average, I would say about one and a half to two years. So... There's good potential, like if you start looking at certain things. So this is one of the reasons why I'm looking at a two-year schedule and I'm saying, okay, I want to be investing into altcoins, but I want to do it for two years um, and see where that leads, right? Now, because of that, I'm thinking layer one blockchains um, and the more decentralized, the better, right? If that makes sense. And what I'm also going to be looking for is um, do these protocols have founders listed or do these protocols or blockchains um, have um, institutional investments or even like you know uh, lock periods like where the, the VCs have a certain amount of money invested or VCs hold uh, a particular amount of coins right I'm going to look at all of those right vesting schedules and XYZ that's what I'm going to look at because if I see that there's uh, massive interest from institutions um, and they hold a lot of coins then I'm going to avoid those projects right so it's, I'm going to do the opposite I'm going to avoid this but they could pump you know a thousand X I don't care right um, I'm just going to avoid them because they're the ones that are going to suffer the most when the institutions start to dump because of the upcoming regulations now, upcoming regulations, it's not just going to impact um, USDC, USDT, BUSD or whatever, right? 
um, I think is going to impact everything, uh, but one after another. So, so far we know that the one that affects pretty much all staking cryptocurrency, um, because you can't stake them easily, would be the current situation where they've um, cracked down on Kraken, right? No pun intended, but that's what they did. They cracked Kraken and um, they made them shut it down. Now, obviously, we've got the founder of Coinbase, um, something Armstrong, I forgot his name, but he is trying his best to fight against it. I think there's going to be some sort of a court case or whatever. It doesn't matter. None of this really matters to me because end of the day, um, if they're going to stop that, then of course, where there's a will, there's a way, and there are plenty of decentralized protocols out there where people would go. But the biggest question is, is the way I look at things is decentralized protocols will pump if you're in it already, right? So if you're going to wait for that last minute, it's not going to be worth it. Now, when it comes to pumping and dumping coins, um, most of the time we do it on centralized exchanges. So it won't help because... The pumping and dumping the the fuel that we put into it usually comes from the institutional players usually comes from the whale wallets right so it's going to be a tough one that's why i'm saying if you are going to plan to go decentralized then you should do this right now if not um, then don't wait for the news because the news is always going to be last minute okay so when everybody panics it, it's going to be chaos so avoid chaos that's all i'm asking you um and then just move on from there so that's how I'm looking at it. And ERC-20s and everything, they are they will be impacted very soon as well. Um, one by one, they're going to crack down on the majority of the cryptocurrencies, um, which is a good thing, by the way, because the market is just messed up right now. We don't need these thousands and thousands and thousands of cryptocurrency. Um, and, you know, we're knowing that 99% of them actually do not bring any value. Um, they're just money grabs. They're just there to take your money. That's all it is. So um, I would be very, very cautious, very, very careful what I pick. As I said, um, there are some blockchain ones that I want to pick. Um, the ones that I think there's enough distribution. For example, the coin is um, distributed enough between different people. So if these projects have anything um up to about 30% with the institution, I'm okay with that. That means 70% could be public funds. I'm okay with that. Um, but if I see something with like the opposite, like 50%, where the institutions hold 50% coins, then I've got a problem. I don't want to be a part of that. So I'm looking at those. Um, so yeah, I mean, I will be looking into um, probably exchange tokens, um, other blockchains that I think are going to be there. Also, look, I know Ethereum is going to be impacted, but probably for the good or worse i don't know but i do hold ethereum i'm not going to buy anymore uh, but i'm just going to huddle what i have and see where it goes because if that's what the institutions want to use i don't see a problem with that um but there are plenty of other blockchains out there who are going to be up and coming and that right now they're going to have the chance to shine solely because of what is going to uh, come out um, you know from these regulations because the regulation is targeting ethereum protocols mostly uh, regulation is targeting usd peg coins mostly um, there could be many reasons there could be because us dollar is about to collapse um, it could be something else i don't know right um, i know pound is right now so my currency is pound i know pounds is being affected right now um, it's being battered dollar still strong against uh, the pound so you know something's happening i don't know what um i mean we've had the the cpi rate released yesterday for um for us but we haven't had anything recently released for uk so i don't really see why uk is dumping but it's happening right so it's going to be interesting to see what really happens. Um, but as I said, market is showing a lot of overbought territories. Market is indicating that we need to um, sell and we need to cool off for a bit, and especially on the higher time frames. I know most people don't look at the higher time frames. They want to look at the, the daily or the short time frames. So this is where the problems are. I mean, I am looking at this on a daily right now. It's looking great. I don't see much of an issue. You can see the 24,264. That's where we need to go. If we can go to that level within the next one or two days, great. Market is bullish, right? As I said, take it with a pinch of salt, what we've seen about the um, death cross and all the news that we've got about that. But other than that, 
when I'm looking at this on a um, weekly, um, I just want to see this to be an engulfing triangle. If I can see this engulf this whole area, um, this candle here, if it can engulf the previous candle, then of course that means it's bullish for me and I'm okay with that and I will just carry on. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, I'm sure I've put too many information here, but look, there's a lot going on. Um, you know, I'm concerned because when the dollar collapses, everything else collapses. I know people don't think like that, but that's what's going to happen. All other currencies are going to collapse. But I want to know what are the safeguards and what are we going to do about all of this? Um, you know, it's a start of something big. Now, whether it's just fake news or real news, I don't know. Whether it's going to impact everybody, I don't know. Um, but what we need to understand is, uh, or actually make decisions, is do we want to be in dollar? Do we want to be in our native currency? Or do we want to finally go decentralized and go to the most decentralized cryptocurrency out there, um, which is BTC? Earlier on today, somebody asked me, they was like, oh, what do we buy? What do we hold on to? I was like, we'll just buy BTC because that's the only option we've got now. We do not have any other options um, which will safeguard any of our wealth. Um, you put money in your bank, your banks could seize that money. Your banks could shut down and go away tomorrow. Of course, they might promise to pay you back. Well, you've got to probably wait for it, fight for it, do whatever. But at that immediate time, immediate moment, you have no resolution. So how, what are you going to do about that? You know, and these, these are the kind of things you've got to wonder, right? You go on a centralized exchange, you've got all your funds over there. When the centralized exchange shuts down for whatever reason or temporarily blocks all transactions, what are you going to do? So I only see that there is one particular asset that is completely, truly decentralized that has the potential for me to uh, stay safe and do whatever I want, wherever I want, whenever I want, right? So I am kind of um, hedging uh, all, most of my bet on that, basically. So I'm like, okay, BTC is the one that's going to be basically shining the most. Um, I know some people have talked about BTC potential to go to, like someone even recently mentioned uh, $10 million a coin in, in 10 years. Um, and probably they know something that we don't. Probably they know something we don't. So let's see, let's see where it goes. But I can see a lot of these um, altcoins and everything will have a hard time. Will have a hard time. No, and I'm not talking about the small fish, the small shrimps um, playing around. I'm talking about big whales are going to make some big moves. And if they decide to dump um, a lot of their assets so they do not lose any money, then you'll see how this market shakes up um so yeah just but stay cautious guys just stay cautious now i said if we do get this engulfing candle then we're bullish but this candle does not close until sunday so please do keep an eye for uh for that um on sunday um but of course if you're doing daily trades and this and that you can look at lower time frames other than that guys um i hope this video is more informative and i'll chat to you soon adios my amigos